everyone, welcome to Middleware Friday for February 15th. This is episode 89. And today we're going to talk about automating welcome emails to new Microsoft Flow users. Of course, using Microsoft Flow in your tenant. So this was, this idea was recently posted on the Flow blog. This was the Flow of the Week. And since I'm recording this before it actually comes out, I'll just refer you to the actual homepage of the Flow blog where you can check it out in more detail. Now, the foundation of this episode really is about the Flow Management Connectors and using them in a different way. I previously talked about the Flow Management Connectors on June 29th, that episode. So feel free to go ahead and check out that episode if you want to understand more about the Flow Management Connectors. So let's go ahead, let's talk about I guess, why this flow? Why is this flow important? Now with the Flow Online Conference that occurred back in December, I talked about five tips for embracing flow and power apps within an organization. And I talked a lot about how a lot of organizations want to restrict flow and power apps. They're concerned that they're just too powerful. And I started to introduce a different approach. I started to talk about organizational change management and how you should actually embrace this demand from your end users and instead of uh, hiding from it and trying to lock the actual tools in a closet, you should actually embrace it. And part of that embracing is actually creating an environment where people can go ahead and explore to do it safely, of course. And one way of doing that is through education. It's kind of like cybersecurity. We always do phishing exercises and the reason for that is it creates teachable moments where you're actually giving people education so they know how to make the right decision. Well, flow is no different. So let's go ahead and provide our end users with resources that they can leverage in order to learn the right paths forward. And that's really what this episode is all about. So I'm gonna go over and jump into the flow itself. And here's the flow, it's not uh, too complex. And as I mentioned, this is really the basis of a template. So if we go into templates and type in flow management, we're going to find this flow here. And this is get a new list of power apps, flows and connectors. This is a great flow that you can run every single day. And it'll send you an email of any of the new assets that exist, whether you want to monitor DLP policies and be able to update new connectors, or you want to understand who's creating power apps and flows. So naturally I've been running this one. And when I've seen a new user that's actually gone ahead and created a flow within my organization, I've gone ahead and reached out with reached out to them. Naturally that doesn't scale all that well. So what I did want to do is actually use this opportunity and these connectors to go ahead and send them a welcome email and then provide them with a series of helpful links that can help them get started. So this is a great place to start if you, um, if you do want to follow along. Okay, so here we are back in our original flow. Now, the first thing we want to do is obviously create a trigger. In this case, it's a trigger that's going to run every day at three o'clock. You can really have it run whenever you, whenever you want it to. We're going to create a couple variables. The first one being a reporting period, and in this case, it's going to be negative one, which represents how many days back we want to go in order to look for any new flows. Now, if we wanted to run this recurrence every week, then we would want to change this value to be minus seven, so that we're looking back seven days previously. Now, one way that flow calculates time is through the use of ticks. And what we can do is use this function of ticks and essentially get the reporting period. So that's basically today. And then what we do is we take our minus one. So it's really yesterday. We get our ticks for yesterday. We're going to store that as an integer in this variable. The next action we want to perform is get environments. Naturally, we need to be an admin to go ahead and make this call, but we're going to get our list of environments returned. And then what we're going to do is we're going to loop through each one and we'll loop through each one. We're going to then get the display name of this environment. And we're then going to list out all of the different flows that belong to that environment. 
and this is going to be using the name or essentially the GUID. Now if we go down to the next step, we're going to have an apply to each. So for each flow that exists within that environment, we're going to see if the ticks for that flow, the current flow, is greater than our reporting period. So let's take today. If I would have created a flow today, we would be getting the ticks for today. We would determine that it's greater than the reporting period, which is yesterday. And then we would go down the yes branch. Now, the next step we want to do is to list all of our group members of a specific group. And we're going to use this group to essentially keep track of all of our users. Now, we'll see later, later on in this flow itself that when someone creates a flow for the first time, we will then add them to this group. And this is how we're going to keep track of people who have already created flows versus new users. The next thing we want to do is to get the properties, the user profile of our creator. And we'll go ahead and use the O365 user action. And then what we're going to go ahead and do is check to see if the user principal from that user profile belongs to our string, which is basically we've just stringified our list of group members. If this belongs to that that group, then we know that they already exist and we would go ahead and move on to the next flow. If they don't exist, this is where we'll go ahead and add them to that group. And then we'll go ahead and send them an email, including um, a bunch of links and information. And I'll show you that here shortly. So we're going to go ahead and perform this process for all of our flows that exist within each environment. So now let's flip back over and uh, I'll go ahead and show you the email that's generated. So here's what that email looks like. I handcrafted all of this HTML myself. And uh, the whole idea here is we've got some resources from Microsoft itself. So we've got the official documentation. We've got guided learning. We've got the flow learning blog resources. Uh, we as an organization subscribe to Quick uh, to Brainstorm and Quick Help. So there's some flow videos on there. We also have the product group videos, which is really John Levesque's channel. And then we have the Microsoft Flow community where there's a, a vibrant community, obviously. And then what we've also done is created an internal Yammer group. And the idea here is we can, you know, empower citizen developers to collaborate, to ask questions amongst them, each other. And we wanted to be able to do that in a secure spot. And we chose Yammer to do that. Uh, we also update people around data loss prevention policies. And the idea is that, you know, if you try to connect, say, Office 365 services to consumer level services such as Gmail, Dropbox, Hotmail, etc., it's not going to work. Also, um, naturally, a lot of organizations have technology use policies. So we also call that out um, just so people understand that, yes, this is a is a governed tool. So hopefully that provides you with some good insight in terms of this uh, this solution, I think it's it's very useful to give people access to some resources that have been vetted by an IT department. Uh, this was some of the feedback we got from our users. So naturally, we went ahead and took that feedback, internalized it, and then actually came up with a solution. So you know, um, if you are happen to be watching this on YouTube, uh, thanks for doing that. I would encourage you to like and subscribe so you don't miss future episodes of Middleware Friday. If you're watching this on integrationusergroup.com, no problem. You can continue to go ahead and watch it there. Um, but we have started to publish our videos in YouTube. You know, we, we want to bring the videos to where people want to watch them. So whatever place is, is uh, more appropriate for you, uh, that's fantastic. We're, we're happy to, to do that. You, may, you will find that there is a slight delay in the videos being uploaded to YouTube though wanted to say thanks to Vistalk360 for being a great partner of the show. And we'll catch you next week on Middleware Friday.